So this is a company, Fast Retailing, that has a number of brands under its umbrella already. Not just Uniqlo, but also Theory, Helmut Lang, uh, Comptoir de Contonier, a bunch of brands that you might not realize. How does J. Crew fit in here? I like that pronunciation. Well, J. Crew would be a great addition for fast retailing, right? Because its biggest contributor to its revenue is what you mentioned first, which is Uniqlo. Mm -hmm. um, and J. Crew gives it a nice step up in addition to its high-end um, brands that it already has. So it, it definitely brings it up a notch. Um, you know, Uniqlo could be compared to the Gap of, uh, of Japan, and there is a need to diversify outside of its home market. You know, you're talking about about $12.6 billion of revenue last year. Most of that, about $9 billion, came from inside of Japan, which is a slow growth market. Yeah. So they have to go outside here, and clearly the company has designs on global domination. You know, the president, uh, Yanai, has, uh, has said that he wants to make it into the biggest retailer in the world. And, you know, unlike a lot of the deals that we've seen from Japanese companies coming to the U.S., for growth, mm -hmm. what makes Yanai very different is that he's price disciplined, and that's he what actually he won't overpay. And that's what will so, actually make this deal different from you know when we've seen, um, for example, SoftBank coming to the U.S. to buy Sprint or Centauri buying Beam. Here's my question: Is is are there fundamental changes in the business? If fast fashion is an unbelievable concept. It's really changing the entire uh, retail clothing business, and and I wonder if that would suggest changes in the way that J Crew. Uh, does their business because one of the secrets of fast fashion is it requires change in fashion. That the the, the fast this fashion manufacturers model they see someone walking on the the runway in Milan. They literally I've, I've read stories about seamstresses in the bowels of a ship building new clothing so it'll arrive in the stores a week you later. You got to keep you got to keep but customers coming. Is that necessary when the, the fashion is J Crew's and doesn't change as much? Mm -hmm. Well, J Crew has changed a lot of its fashion and in a way it's kind of adapted that model of always constantly coming out with new designs and you know at the higher end like I said, you know Retailers have to innovate just as much as technology companies. That's my question. Have to would, would in an acquisition, would the company actually change? Would they make? Well, look, have they done the, this without the company they've acquired? Well, at the end of the day, um, Yanai is a big fan of Mickey Drexler, so it'd be hard to see, you know, a massive change. It looks like he wants to buy this company because he likes Mickey Drexler and probably would keep him at the helm. How that would work out is uh, is really tough to say because you're talking about before, a clash right? of personalities in a way. The two men have met before, Tadashi Sanai. Oh yeah. Tadashi and I has been uh, in contact with this company, J. Crew, for a long time, and talks just started recently formally um, because there's been discussions about this company going public. You know, it has private equity backers, of course, TPG and 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 Leonard Green that want to cash out. And quick question: valuation on J. Crew going public? So they would be much rather be valued more like a Ted Baker, which trades about 17 times uh, cash flow, versus a Gap, which trades about eight times cash flow. So we, we could see them try and, and get. Flow. Yeah, that's not bad. But for a growth retailer, that's what they're going for in the public markets.